Modern movies suck is a statement that you might have heard before along with the words of genre fatigue, franchise fatigue, oversaturation, of course, get woke, go broke. While the people that invoke those things when criticizing modern movies probably truly believe that those are the reasons why modern, specifically big brand movies suck, they are only looking at the consequences of something else. The true reason why modern movies suck is simply money and skill and risk. It's a little bit more complicated, but mainly money. It won't go away, and it's loved by all of the most annoying people on earth. Good, like, let it die. Failing directors and actors keep getting huge projects. The first and most obvious of the problems facing Disney are financial. There are, of course, several factors that lead to a movie being made, but the main reason why movies are made in the movie industry is simply money. Still, movies are also not made in a vacuum. Even if the main drive for the movie industry is money, you still need a person or a group of people that use tools to create a movie. To paint you a picture, I make videos because I want to, and fortunately enough, people seem to enjoy some of the things I make, but others might simply create because it's their job. While they still might enjoy doing it, the biggest factor for why people make movies, videos or art in general, when it's their job, it's money. This is especially true when we're talking about movies coming from the big studios like Disney, Sony, Warner Brothers and Co. With that in mind, why do so many of those big brand movies suck? You've got to do better, Senator. Well, depending on who you ask, you will get a variety of reasons why a specific movie sucks, but most of them are... slightly correct. Keep in mind, everything I will talk about will not be a justification for movie sucking, it's an explanation for why it happens in the first place. One of the most common things you might hear about movies nowadays is that they have too much CGI, and I... I strongly disagree. You could say CGI is used wrongly, but there's probably no such thing as too much CGI. Since we're often talking about the blockbuster movies, let's take the Marvel movies as an example. These are mostly superhero movies that include a lot of fantasy in the form of superpowers, magic and techno magic. While certain superpowers can be depicted without any computer generated images, a lot of superpowers are difficult, if not impossible, to be depicted with practical effects. Something like flying could be pulled off with a practical set and wires, but something like an energy beam coming from someone's hand or the complete transition of someone's body would be quite difficult, if not impossible, to pull off with practical effects only. Even in the flying example, the practical effects would need to be enhanced with some sort of CGI since you would need to remove wires or whatever aperture was needed to make someone fly. Going further, assuming you somehow pull off for a practical effect without anything being visible on camera, one would still need to color correct the image, add foley, sound effects and just simply edit the scenes. Similar to how CGI can be used wrongly, all of those other effects can also be applied wrongly. If you cut your scenes out of order, movies become incoherent to follow. If I'll mention this concept, add it to footage to make the point clear. If your sound effects and folly are out of sync, scenes can change their feel widely or just seem wrong. And depending on how you color correct your image, the movie will have a widely different vibe. Denying that a lot of CGI is executed badly would be stupid though, because a lot of it is. The technical reasons why a lot of the CGI is of low quality is not in my expertise, and you can look up channels like Color the Digital if you want to learn more about it. But in short, often those CGI scenes or enhancements are lacking similar properties to the rest of the movie reality, and the transition between CGI and RL footage is rough to non-existent. What I want to focus on are the underlying conditions that make the usage of CGI suck. One of the main reasons why CGI is often executed badly in movies is mostly communication. CGI, like any other effects, needs to be planned, adapted and executed by a team. 
Movies, even though often accredited to a single person, are still a team effort. What often happens in those big blockbuster productions is that the writers, producers, marketers and CGI artists don't really talk to each other or are not really allowed to talk to each other and discuss what is even possible in the allotted time frame needed for the movie. So you might have a writer that describes a certain creature that is not possible to be made with practical effects, but they don't really talk or are not allowed to talk to the CGI artist, which leads to the artist being rushed to finish something so the movie can be released at the right tactical time, the marketing team defined to maximize the movie's profit. Or the director is not really knowledgeable in the realm of CGI and therefore doesn't film the, or light the scene so that it can be enhanced with CGI. Or producers decide to change certain things last minute based on market research, forcing the CGI team to crunch and deliver a subpar result. Or, 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 or. Why movie studios are structured like this has many reasons, but for the sake of yours and my insanity, I will say the historical reasons why pretty much every profit-driven company eventually is built like a pyramid and silos developed that are specialized in certain topics but influence each other in unpredictable ways. Most of the time, this happens because of power, prestige, and... Hello! I like money. There are two types of art in the art industry, self-serving art and profit-driven art. Someone living in the middle of nowhere making a mosaic of random animals is clearly not interested in profit. They're doing the thing for pure enjoyment. Making a multi-million dollar movie is definitely not solely for artistic endeavors and purely or mainly for profit. The mosaic guy can spend as much time and effort as they want to finish the animal mosaic. They can restart the process, completely scrap it and start anew, take long breaks between the steps and so on. There's no time pressure nor is there any cost for the person besides the time they need to make the mosaic and gather the materials. A high budget movie needs to succeed financially, simply because that's how the economic system works. Companies create products that make a profit to then be able to make more profit with the next product at infinitum. To be clear, I'm just describing how it is, not how I wish it could be. Given that this is the ground on which a movie is developed, you have to make it fast enough, cheap enough, and it has to have um, as much quality as required for people to actually go to the cinema. Unfortunately, quality, cost, and time investment are three different things that are highly dependent on each other, and you can't have all of them. You can only have two. If you want a high quality product and a lower cost, it's gonna take a lot of time. If you want something to be done fast and cost efficient, the quality is gonna suffer. If you want something to be high of quality, fast, it's gonna cost a lot. This triangle basically explains pretty much why products suck in our current economic system. Specifically for us, it explains what is going on with Disney Marvel movies as of 2024. So hear me out here, okay? Maybe, just maybe, you might have noticed Marvel movies have been pumped out on a very consistent rate ever since the first Avengers movie, and they have been declining in quality to say the least. With that in mind, I think it would be fair to say that those MCU movies and projects are made under a rather tight timetable. While there's probably wiggle room on how long a project can take, most of the projects are planned to fit into a certain release schedule to maximize the amount of people that will watch those movies. Instead of approaching a movie with the idea that they want to make a quality product, most of those movies need to be done fast, at a low budget, and quality is seen by the studios themselves as secondary or tertiary in this case. If you look at this triangle, it explains why most of those Marvel movies are either average or just suck. If you want a decent quality product, that means it's either gonna cost a lot or gonna take some time to develop. While Marvel movies have a high budget, they are made under a rather tight timetable. And so the quality consequently suffers despite the high budget, because the focus is on low cost, low time. So even though the costs keep ballooning, it explains why the quality still doesn't go up, because the time allotted to the projects are still very low. So even though you have a lot of cost investment, a lot of price budget, the time is so important that it diminishes the quality either way. 
But the magic triangle can explain the ballooning budgets and the declining writing quality. There's another thing going on here called risk mitigation. Do you want to play a game? Oh, no, thanks. Which leads us uh, directly into the topic of franchise fatigue, genre fatigue, reboots, sequels, and prequels, and so on. Writing, especially good writing, does take time, which is part of the problem, but good writing is also risky. Most of the time it involves introducing new elements and experimenting with format, prosa, and tone. Companies really hate taking risks, especially established companies that are investing a lot up front. So now you have these two concepts interfering with the artistic process at the same time. You have the magic financial triangle dictating the ceiling on how good the piece of art can be simply based on how many resources and how much time the artists have. And you also have the companies getting rid of anything that could be seen as risky from the writing standpoint. This whole topic reaches so far that there are people that think certain franchises should be completely die out and others think that even something like public domain should be stopped since those two things lead to a lack of original and once again, they are not entirely correct. Let's assume a world where the quality of movies stood at the top for movie studios. Would anybody really complain about sequels? Certainly some people would, but most people would probably be a-okay with an endless amount of sequels because despite the movies being set in the same world, it would offer something of high quality every time. When we talk about franchise fatigue, genre fatigue, reboots, sequels, and prequels, we're not really talking about the actual existence of those things. We're talking about the quality. In truth, the critique of those things is a critique of a bunch of other small things that lead back to risk mitigation and cost reduction. One must simply look at someone like Adam Sandler. His movies suck, but most of the time they are pretty financially successful. Looking from a purely financial view, I would always invest in an Adam Sandler movie, even if I found those movies abhorrent, simply because they are low risk, low cost, and high reward. To make this point clearer, if tomorrow a movie studio decided to make a superhero movie, what would more likely be chosen? The best movie ever written in the existence of movies that is also cost efficient and would take a bit of time to make called Hero X who nobody ever heard of before. Or Spider-Man, the return revenge of the ravenous Dr. Octopus featuring Green Goblin that costs a lot of money, time, and is absolute trash. As of 2024, you would always choose Spider-Man, even if Hero X might be one of the best movies ever made in the existence of movies to ever be shown to mankind, the risk you might be taking is too high for companies to sign off so much money up front. One of the main reasons why most movie studios are so desperately trying to develop franchises is simply because it eases the risk they take when making a movie and assures them at least a confident amount of return on investment without increasing advertisement costs. This also explains why everything that can be considered an IP is developed into a movie. Most recent example as of 2024 being Barbie. You've caught me reading. Oh. To be even clearer on how most of those critiques against franchises and co don't hold water, one must just think of a few examples. Toy Story 2 is held up as one of the best animated movies of all time, surpassing Toy Story 1. Charlie's Angels, the 2000s movie, is considered a great action flick based on a show from the fucking 70s. Rise of the Planets of the Apes is considered one of the greatest reboots, and in fact the entire new trilogy is held up in high regard. So what's going on here? Why do so many people bring arguments such as too much of X is making movies bad, too much of CGI makes the movie bad, too much sequels makes movie bad, too many franchises make movies bad, and so on. For that we need to talk about a few random things that all lead back to the same thing. Quality. Bro, what are you talking about, man? What we established so far is that the quality of movies made by big studios are capped through the concept of the financial magic triangle consisting of cost, quality, and time, as well as the concept of risk mitigation. This explains pretty much why there are so many franchises, sequels, and reboots, as well as why their quality is capped and declining. Then there is you, the viewer or maybe the creator of videos that criticize those things. 
what you think doesn't necessarily have an influence on the quality of movies, but it colors the discussion around this topic. For that, I want to take a few videos into consideration. But this video is more about public domain, there's one sentence that stood out when it came to the idea of franchise or IP. In this video, JT says the following. I just, I hate Alice in Wonderland so much because it won't go away and it's loved by all of the most annoying people on earth. Disliking or liking something based on other people's opinions is kind of stupid on its own, but understandable. We're after all social animals and other people's opinions can influence your own opinion, be it positive or negatively. This might not be a big factor on why movies suck, but it's a factor for why, why movies get away with bad quality for a really long time. At the height of the Marvel movie success, those movies could get away with a lot of things. Their formulaic structure, their dialogue, the end of movie advertisement, even though not much has changed, the perception of those things have. Disregarding the drop in quality, those things have over time been slowly seen as annoying. While the critique of those things might have met their fears in the past, they now do find fertile ground. Not necessarily because they are bad, but because they're seen as bad. Still, the critique of those things all come back to quality. I don't think JT would have a problem with public domain adaptation 6969 if the quality was a given. It always comes back to quality. And quality is tied to the financial magic triangle as well as risk mitigation. In FSP's video about franchises that Hollywood refused to let die, we encountered the common argument Men in Black was a product of its time. Its camp and its absurdity were clearly made for the 90s and very early 2000s. While I can't deny that certain products could have only been financially successful in a certain time period, there are too many examples of movies that are still great to this day despite being made decades ago. The thing is, franchises are not static, they are allowed to change. They might be bound to certain parameters, mostly considering world building and pre-existing characters, but everything else can change. Even in the video itself, FSP mentions the very successful reboot of Charlie's Angels that is based on a show from the fucking 70s. So the actual problem doesn't seem to be simply that it was a product of its time. Again, this is about quality. The very simple reason why the MIB sequel bombed and the Charlie's Angel reboot succeeded is because the MIB sequel sucked. The same way the Charlie's Angels reboot sucked. While I focus on the economical reasons for the quality of modern big corp movies sucking, there's also the factor of skill issue. Some writers, directors and actors are just simply not good. Failing directors and actors keep getting huge projects. Funny enough, one of the reasons in a Watch Mojo video about why movies suck currently is that failed directors and actors get hired over and over again to make movies. And here we kind of come full circle. They get hired because they're fast and cheap. That's it. They're fast and cheap and decently financially successful. It doesn't really matter if they're good or bad. They're fast and cheap. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. If you have been paying attention, you should know by now the reason why modern movies suck is mainly a financial one. The financial magic triangle caps out the quality of the movies and risk mitigation and cost reduction cause the quality to decrease over time. These concepts also explain why pretty much every brick brand is developing their products into movies and working on creating a franchise, sequels, prequels, reboots, etc, etc, etc. And it always comes back to quality. It always comes back to quality. <laughs> 